Have you ever tried to recreate an old painting that you have done? Well, I have. And I want to show you that journey of how this and this came to be. On 15th of February 2022, it was the first time I painted from a reference photo. It was a photograph from Chris McDonald's site on her Instagram where I found such beautiful overlays of wildflowers all spread out and then she photographed them. I really love them so much that I figured the best way for me to try and capture actual flowers was to start painting from reference. Having looked at that painting over time, I thought it would be really fun for me to recreate it and try painting again from a reference photo in a very similar style. In day one, we are going to be painting these three flowers. Let's go. In this video, we are going to be pulling out a couple of flowers that speaks to me. So what you want to paint could be very different from what I'm planning to paint, maybe because you might be attracted to different types of flowers. So I want you to think about the flowers that are speaking to you when you look at a reference photo and then next kind of planning it out and putting it down now in this particular composition you see i have all the stems straight and they were done in an intentional way because i wanted the flowers to stand out that even though they were looking in different directions the stems were still straight so in this video i am going to be painting two or three flowers and then we are going to take a pause and then we'll come back again and continue to fill the page over time so you're going to see this painting slowly grow over the next few videos because we're not able to finish everything in one video and i want to keep each painting session short so that it's manageable for you to come back to so just to introduce to you what supplies i have on my table here I've got my 100% cotton cold press paper from Baohong Academy and this is a 16 by 12 inch paper. I love painting big because you know it means that you get to move a lot more. You also have more space to capture more flowers. So I love 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 big pieces of paper. Now on my desk I've got two cups of water. I've got my brushes here, my assortment of brushes. So I've got a couple of flat brushes both synthetic and mixed natural hair synthetic brushes and then I've got a round brush here as well my paint tubes and palettes that are from Sennelier I'm going to be spraying them down so that they are nice and moist and then I've also got my watercolour inks here and these watercolour inks essentially are just inks from Dr. Martin PH I have use them in a pill box so that I can continue to kind of spray them down and use them again. Now over here I've got my watercolour um, ceramic plate. This is just a regular plate from the kitchen section in a, in a home store so you don't really need a fancy plate. So let's begin. I'm going to be setting my reference photo aside and I want to show you again the painting that I did before. And right here, I've painted pretty big blooms and I'm going to again pull out some of these similar looking flowers because I want to do a comparison as well from the time that I painted these and from now, right? And these were painted in 15th of February 2022 and the date today is um, it's, it's actually in May 2023 right now. So let's try it out. Now I'm going to start off with my brushes and I'm just going to pull out my reference photo kind of figuring out which shape that I want to go with. Now the nice thing about a reference photo that is not very detailed is that you get to focus more on the shapes rather than the details which is essentially what you want to do as a loose floral painter. So I'm going to set my reference photo aside and I'm just going to pull out a couple of flowers that I'm going to be painting. So I'm going to get a nice red hue first. And you can see that my brush is not wet enough so I'm going to wet it a little bit more. And you know the fun thing about this painting that I had done at that time, I was using predominantly a round brush and right now what I'm using is a flat brush. I've definitely pivoted and changed the types of brushes that I'm using. 
but I think that that is such a, a strength or it's so fun so I'm just pulling out petals and these petals are basically starting from the inside out and I'm just placing them down so I've got one floral shape right there and I can see that the peach shade that I had put in earlier is bleeding into my red and if I don't want that you're welcome to manipulate it around and kind of push it back so I'm going in with more red so I'm kind of pushing it back and manipulating it a little so I'm excited to see what's the difference in my painting style uh, whether I've developed or whether I've changed in the way I've painted and I've got one flower there and I'm going to capture something similar, another red one I'm not sure what flowers these are but I'm just assuming that um, they could be poppies or something This is a gorgeous red that I've got from Sinailie So I've got my three flowers down and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my stems now while waiting for it to dry I'm going to create my stems and I want to pull out some yellow and I've got some existing blue here so I'm just going to kind of mix up my own green and see where that takes me I know I took the blue from there before so I'm just going to do that and then I'm going to pull out my stems so these stems don't really have leaves on them but just for the fun of it I'm just going to add them anyway so it feels a bit more fun and so these are some imaginary leaves that I'm adding kind of pulling it out Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create the centers and I'm kind of going in and taking my synthetic round brush a small one because the one that I have here is pretty big so I just want a synthetic small round and I'm going to take some of these um, it's a Van Dyke brown I'm going to mix it with Kaput Mortem all my colours are from Sennelier and what I really want is a kind of a greyish hue so I'm going to just see if I can mix in a little blue into this brown and then I get a slightly muddier grey blue hue so the first thing I'm going to check is I'm going to make sure that my centres are dry because I don't want the centres to bleed in there I want it to be intentional that these centers are going to be just very defined, not bleeding into the flower. And I know that this one is still a little wet, so I'm just going to just dab where the sides are, keeping some of those white spaces. And then I'm gonna go in and do the same with here. And it's slightly wet, so there's a slight bleed over there but I'm just going to go with that bleed and let it be because the consistency of paint on my brush is quite thick so as a result, you don't get so much of a runny bleed but rather the bleed looks a lot more controlled so I'm quite happy with these so far now I'm going to add a couple of layers just to give it a little tinge of definition so I'm going to get my red again and this time I'm going to add a tinge of this mixture here just to darken it a little and you can see that when I added it in it looks a little muddier almost like it has turned into an Indian red and that's because there's got some components of blue in there so it does look a bit more purplish in terms of its um, colour so I'm just adding a couple of areas where I want there to be shadow to showcase the petal I'm seeing that here is still wet so it's getting soft 
bleeds over there and I kind of like it as well I'm just going to go with it having some of those nice soft bleeds adding in just a touch of shadow and you know you don't have to shadow everything I'm just shadowing just a small bit then when I touched into the black I saw that parts of it has started to run and that's okay as well now I'm softening the transition here because it looked really stark so I'm just using clean water and kind of rubbing it out so that I get a softer transition between the dark colours and the light colours I don't want it to be too stark that's what I'm doing then I'm going around kind of adding in some of these colour veins Right, I think I'm quite happy with these two blooms and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add a couple of layers to my to my greens This here marks the end of this video where we will just be painting three flowers and the next time we meet, we're going to be painting more. So until then, keep growing your little garden and I can't wait for us to paint together again. See you next time.